Alright, so a question I get asked a lot by my students and sometimes viewers is what are these things in your fish tanks? Well, first thing I tell them is, well, they're fish. You know, being a smart aleck. And uh, I tell them, okay, no, actually they're my, my filter. And they say, well, I've never seen a filter like that in a store. And I told them, well, that's because I didn't get them from a store. And they always think at first that I came up with the idea on my own and I made it on my own, but I didn't. I always give credit to where I got it from, which is uh, the king of DIY, formerly known as Uaru Joey. Um, I'll put the link below to his video that shows you how to make these. And um, anyways, all it is is a uh, repurposed water bottle because I hate them. They're noisy. They are bad for the earth. They um, are really annoying when students flip them in class. And so I just hate them. So anyway, students bring them to class, drink water, leave them behind, recycle them, hopefully. So I go in the uh, recycling bin and get some pretty good clean water bottles and drill some holes in the top right there as you'll see and then I drill a hole in the bottom as you can probably guess that's where the airline tubing is going into up the, under the gravel then I fill it with some gravel which is the most difficult part then I fill it with this these white plastic like pasta things floating around which is called K1 Caldness I'll put a link below um, for where you can order these just one possible place can order these they're usually used in the pond and industry and the way that they work is the k1 caldness um, is has a very large surface area for its size and the large surface area um, gives a home for the beneficial nitrifying bacteria to live so the nitrifying bacteria lives there fixes the nitrogen and um, since it's moving and they're constantly bumping into other king coldness pieces they are knocking off the dead and old beneficial bacteria keeping only the young bacteria alive on the k1 coldness the young beneficial bacteria is the most efficient and effective uh, bacteria so that's the one that keeps the water the cleanest and best for the fish <coughs> um, the filter in the back I've had going for probably over a year now and I have not had to clean it because it's self-cleaning I know I could put a sponge on the bottom of it and that would make it more of a, um, a mechanical fi filtration but so far this has been working pretty good. I do minimal uh, gravel vacuuming. I uh, do the basic water changes um, for the health of the fish. But I have not had to clean this filter. It looks like I might need to maybe wipe off some of the algae, but that's just a aesthetic thing. Um, but it's really the lowest maintenance filter I've ever had. So thank you, King of DIY, for teaching me how to do that. Um, very useful. It also provides a teachable moment for my students to explain to them the nitrogen cycle and why if they first get a fish and put it into a fish tank with water immediately why the fish die because of new tank syndrome because the nitrifying bacteria hasn't had a chance to set up their colonies. And uh, so it's a very teachable moment. Um, I love those teachable uh, moments that are real life examples. Um, I think students learn learn best from those. So um, anyways that's what they are. It's just a airline tube going into a hole that's just barely smaller than the tube so it fits in there snugly. I put the gravel in there for weight. Um, another variation is you could put a um, suction cup thing on the water bottle to hold it up against the glass part of the tank 
or the side of the tank and then put the K1 coldness in there and then sink it to make sure it fills with water and make sure it has enough holes in the top to release the air bubbles and then turn up the airflow from the air pump right back there to um, if I use a gang valve see right back there there's the gang valve to control the airflow and um, make sure you have a check valve my check valve is somewhere around that top left corner I think right yeah there it is um, make sure you have that so it doesn't back siphon um, and um, and that's pretty much it. Control the flow of the air bubbles just until you get full movement of the K1 caldness. That one back there is higher flow because there's more K1 caldness media in there. Um, eventually, I will take, probably after this video sometime today, I will take some of that K1 caldness media and put it in this smaller water bottle here um, because it's already cycled, so it's ready to put into here to add to have for fish. Um, and eventually, I know this is more than what I need in this tank, what I'm doing is by having both of them running, when I have this tank up and running, I will, all I will have to do is just take one of these out, put it in this new tank, obviously once it's filled with water and gravel, and then it will already be cycled and it will, will be ready for fish as soon as it gets up to temperature. Um, not a high amount of fish, I'll slowly add fish to slowly cycle it. Uh, but it'll be ready um, pretty much immediately and uh, the effects of new tank syndrome will be minimal if at all um, so anyways if you have any more questions about these um, water bottle k1 caldness filters uh, just comment below with your question uh, once again the link to where I learned how to make these from will be also below I'll put a link to the video maybe yeah I will at the end of this video um, please uh, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Have a good day. Bye.